the duck under every single door frame, but at six foot seven, Volkov is two inches taller. Interestingly, it's a slipperage advantage of half an inch for Greg Hardy. With the Octagon introductions, here's Joe Martinez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Three rounds, this in the UFC heavyweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's a striker, standing six feet, five inches tall. Weighing in officially 265 pounds. His professional record stands at five victories. One defeat and one no contest. Fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, USA. Here is the Prince of War, Greg Hardy! And across the octagon, his opponent fighting out of the red corner. His background, karate and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. At six feet, seven inches tall, he weighed in officially 251 pounds. In 37 professional fights, his record, 30 victories. Just seven defeats, fighting out of representing Moscow, Russia. Here is the number seven rated heavyweight contender. the action, Leon Roberts. Leon Roberts is the Octagon official, but he needs to be on his toes because it looks like Greg Hardy is about to sprint across the Octagon. He has been talking about his athleticism. He said it's no joke. First round, there we see Alexander fight. Volkov looking light-hearted and smiling. Pressure seems to be on him. Greg Hardy right. stepping in. Actually... Tied for fifth fastest turnaround in UFC history, 22 days between fights. What? What? This is where the, the pedigree, the experience of uh, Volkov comes what? into play. He, he, can, he can play a lot of striking games, he can set traps with uh, Greg Hardy. Just as he did with Derek Lewis, he was able to beat him up to the body, he was able to wear him out, keep him at a distance. Oh, nice footwork there and shift of weight by Hardy. He has won all of his wins by first round knockouts. Alexander Volkov with that karate base. Oh, left hook there. Nice, nice jab. jab from Volkov. What I thought was very interesting was just the way in which Hardy's mind works and he's stepping up for his his teammate JDS he saw it's his responsibility for the man down and also to repay the debt to the UFC for all the opportunities that they have given him and this is a great learning experience for him you know win or loss this is there are lots of things to be gained from this fight obviously a win is massive but there's the takedown oh no Volkov straight back straight to Straight up against the fence there, he was able to get a long leg to the floor. I wouldn't be surprised though if we saw Greg Hardy work a takedown here. So much experience in a way of Alexander Volkov. He has 30 professional wins to his resume. The opponents that Hardy has fought, their wins total 31 combined. <laughs> ah, stats. <laughs> and you've got to think that Volkov has faced big power punches in his past. You know, he's used his kickboxing skills to be able to keep himself out of danger and get those fights won. Well, Brett was mentioning the, the countdown against Derek Lewis. He was winning it, and then things like they do in the heavyweight division, they turn around pretty quickly. I think he just felt like he, he was so comfortable in that fight, cruising, to, to, cruising to a distance, yeah. you know. He got complacent. Yes. And I think the difference between Derek Lewis and uh, Greg Hardy is that Derek Lewis and Greg Hardy both punch like a truck, but I feel like Greg Hardy's probably going to be able to cover distance much quicker. Well, Hardy's been, well, he's had a few views on the power of Derek oh. Lewis recently as well. Volkov is such a respectful martial artist. And you see, I mean, to his credit, Hardy already looking much more calm in there, relaxed, pumping the jab out there and showing a lot of patience. I mean, you know, we, this is not the Greg Hardy we saw in the Contender Series. This is not the one we saw in his debut. It's just much more patient. He's not hunting just to knock out Volkov, but I think he would benefit from a little more of that to try to throw off Volkov. The longer this fight goes, the more Volkov is going to get into his own rhythm and be able to figure him out. Seven professional fights for Greg Hardy. 
and he's in the co-main event on enemy territory in Moscow. A lot of talent. He spent his life as a professional athlete. He believes he can move like no one else in that division. He hasn't really thrown too many looping overhands either. He's just kind of pumping this jab out there. A couple leg kicks. Nice stiff jab there from Volkov. Hardy's, the occasion doesn't seem to have gotten to him either. He's settling right into this battle. I think there's also a there's also a peace of mind knowing that he is taking this fight on short notice against a guy that's got so much more experience than him. So there is everything to gain and nothing to lose, really. Yeah, it may be just yeah, go for broke, right? Right. But he's the but that he, being said, he's not fighting like that at least, no, right? No. I mean, the, the mentality in him and being relaxed in there, you know, suits that. But as far as him just being like, oh, wired up, I'm just going to try to get him out of there. Ooh, oh, that's a yeah. nice right hand as Greg Hardy circled. And something that, that Brett mentioned on the walkouts as well, which is which I think is key to, to remember. Oh, nice left hook there. Oh, two big nice. left hooks. Is that, you know, Greg Hardy as a football player is used to having a fast turnaround. You play one game, it ends, win or lose, you move on to the next one immediately. I would imagine that the fast turnaround is much more suitable for a, uh, an athlete of his mentality. And he said he's able to do that because in football, there's so much more science and everyone's looked after so much better. They spend every waking moment taking care of themselves, which is why we see this frequency of action from him. Okay, that's a good one. All right, so we're gonna need to double, yeah, double up on that lead hand, all right? Aim for his chest. Let's start working double jabs, okay? So, when you catch all those kicks, when you catch those kicks, double jab. So let's hit the chest and then go up top, all right? Yeah, so everything, yeah, but everything in sets of two, but let's aim at his chest first. Answer those kicks at his chest. Answer it with the jab and then look to hook over the top. But you're doing good and let's keep that circle going. If you feel it, let's get some educated pressure. Uh, he's leading the dance a lot, but, if, <laughs> but I like the circling, okay? If you feel it. But we gotta double up on that lead hand. Welcome back to Moscow. We are just about to head into second the round, second round. Fight. Big smiles from both fighters. Freedom. But Dan, we saw there's a very significant piece of information that we learned from Greg Hardy. Yes, his right hand is injured, which is a, a big problem for him, knowing full well that the big right hand over the top is, is his key to winning this fight. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the fight's not winnable for him because as, as a powerful athlete, he's got other weapons that he can utilize. But his most yeah. comfortable so weapon great, is somewhat please? disabled, which is a which is an issue for him to work around. It's going to test his adaptability as a mixed martial artist. Learning more lessons than he probably planned for Paul, but he's been yeah. told to double up on keep that left hand as well and aim at the chest. Yeah, and I think he needs to Thank do you. that, double up on that jab, and then do what he was doing with that leaping in left hook. He's got a good chance of coming over the top and catching Volkov with that as well. But the more we see that coming out of Volkov, the more he's in trouble. Snappy jab there from Volkov. Threw it there. Well, remembering that Hardy gets his work done early. We're now in the second round, and Volkov was preparing for a five-round fight against Junior Dos Santos, who got an infection and was forced to withdraw from the contest. Volkov still seeking that fight, and perhaps against Alistair Overeem. But he does see name value in Greg Hardy, who's obviously well-known to fans in the U.S., So I've just been shown a replay on my monitor of a kick that was blocked by Greg Hardy away from his body and it looked like he took the kick right on the side of his wrist. And I remember Randy Couture was, was once uh, uh, affected by the same kick. He was caught on the wrist and it broke. I mean, we don't know exactly whether that's it, but something certainly caused uh, an issue for the hand. Yeah, and if that's the case, that's worse than even a broken hand. Yes. At least a broken hand, your hand's wrapped, it's in a glove. But if your forearm is broken, everything that you do, you feel that vibrating through your arm and it hurts. Hardy believes that 
he has the correct mindset and background to really be able to develop in this sport. He said, when you're playing football, you're given a 45-page game plan every single week that you've got to commit to memory, then throw it away and get ready for a new one the next week. Yeah, not, only, yeah, not only has he been testing his physical capacity, but his mental capacity yes. as well in that environment. Yeah, and he's absorbing all this new information, and that's why he's able to evolve so quickly between fights. Jab to the body is working well. He, he threw the right hand to the body then, but he didn't put any power behind it. I wonder whether maybe he can set up a left hook off it. This is exactly what we expected from Volkov, though. Picking his opponent off at range, staying disciplined, showing us how much of a, of a veteran he is of this game. Nice overhand right from Greg Hardy. It's a shame because if that hand wasn't hurt, that might right. have been more impactful, but... Well, back in September... In the fist. Back in September of 2012, Greg Hardy actually broke his thumb early in the season, but still managed 11 sacks that season. So he's fought through the adversity before. So funny to hear you say sacks, John. <laughs> Should I say quarterback sacks? No, no, you're right. Sacks is good. You got it. Yeah. I watched a little bit. London Monarchs back in the day. London Monarchs. My big thumb finger <laughs> up jabbing the air. It's a big fan. That Peter Griffin played the London Monarchs, didn't he? <laughs> Had the coat and everything. Anyway, nice. lovely front kick. I love the way Volkov uses straight attacks. Yeah, and he does go so well to the body, especially with his kicks. And you could see the effect that those body kicks had on Derek Lewis in that fight, even to the point where Derek Lewis was doubled over with his hands on his knees up against the fence. Volkov has had Sergei Pavlovich in camp, who's got a similar kind of build to Hardy, and obviously. A very successful mixed martial artist got a big win out in Singapore a couple of weeks back. Hardy's still trying to throw that right hand. I mean, a spinning back fist there. <laughs> Paul's wincing at the side of us. Yeah, because that thing is broken. Ah. It hurts. Volkov more accurate. Similar kind of output from both of these behemoths. Utilizing that lead leg so well, whether it's a front kick, or a body kick, or a head kick. No nice. switch involved, just oh. picks it up. Boop. And for a guy that tall to do that, with that big of a leg, impressive. Yeah, these body kicks are really, Whoop. really good from Volkov. And it's starting to affect the way that uh, Greg Hardy's moving into range as well. Yeah, because when he rushes in, that's when he just picks that lead leg up right to the body. Last 10 so seconds, funny. but we're going to follow Greg Hardy back to his corner and see if he gives us any clues about his injury. <laughs> All right, just give me some deep breaths. Just give me some deep breath. Okay, so... <laughs> I know the we'll right hand is damaged, but you got to at least put it in his face to set up that left hook. Oof. Okay, so at least flash it, flash it, body kick, flash it, left hook. But we got to put something in his face because he's getting too many unanswered leg kicks. That's yeah. how he gets his rhythm going. So at least flash it into his field of vision to set up that left hook. Yeah. But we can't let him touch your lead leg. That's how he gets going. That's how he gets. His, we can't get those touches. We got to answer him with that right hand. Just be careful the fingers don't come up for me, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, now it's important to know that we are only speculating, but this is the shot that we saw. Volkov throws a kick, and you can see Greg Hardy blocks it away from his body. Gentlemen, and that oftentimes final, can be you're a ready? problem when, uh, when you're taking a shin to a forearm like that. The bones aren't quite as strong. Oh. We don't know for sure, of course, but that could be the problem that was caused. Volkov managed to weave his massive foot in between the defences and catch Hardy on the chin. Hardy coming out at least aggressive here in this third round. He knows he's got to bite down, get in there, and try to make something happen. Whether your hands hurt or not, if you're still in this fight, you got to get in there and throw. When well, he's in the third and final round, which is Alexander Volkov, yeah. the number seven heavyweight in the world. There's an eye poke there. That was a knuckle, that was a knuckle. 
Apparently not, apparently a knuckle. Um, doesn't matter though, Greg Hardy still wants to keep going. Yeah, good point. Good jab by Volkov, spearing jab through the guard. I really enjoyed his fight with Stefan Struve, which we called. Nice angle change there from Volkov, slips off to the side and lands his own strikes. He can work on a process of attrition sometimes, Volkov. I do believe that he does better over five rounds these days. But he just breaks people down. It, it looked like the uh, the shot that caught Greg Hardy in the eye looked like, a, looked like the knuckle of the thumb of, oh. uh, of Volkov. Good eye there from the ref. Leon Roberts, one of the very best in the game. Very experienced. You guys are talking about maybe a takedown from Hardy. Is that something that you still maintain he should try and do? Or would a, would the right hand, yeah. being the way that it is, just not be a, a good idea? Because he's always going to lose power on that side. I, I thought he might come out and try, and try and work a takedown early just for the surprise factor of it. But um, I, I think with the, with the right hand being hurt, he's far more likely to maintain this kind of pace on the feet and just try and land that clean left hook. He keeps working to the body. It's, it's, I keep expecting him to try and come up around the side of the guard because because Volkov's got such good defense, he does tend to catch. Oh. He does tend to catch punches with his palms, and that does open up that opportunity to come around the side of the guard, especially if you can cut the distance so quickly and you can commit to the shot. Oh! <laughs> Volkov living up to his strike rate, second highest strike rate in UFC heavyweight history, of course, came with the number one. Kick again. Just Mark, pick he's got to go for it here. But with that, you know, I, I'm curious to find out what the injury is to the arm or hand or what's going on because he really has not thrown much of that right hand at all. No. In fight. He's disguising it well, though, because Volkov has I don't think Volkov can see that this is a problem for him. So sharp with his straight punches is Volkov. I always like to see a fighter that's got a height and reach advantage really utilize it to the best of their ability. So often we see the taller guys, particularly at heavyweight, get closed down very fast. Yeah, they just uh, oftentimes fight to the size of their opponent. If they're shorter, end up fighting in that closer range. It's a bad habit for some tall guys. Some bruising on the uh, on the shin bone of Volkov. There's some swelling as well. Oh, the dexterity of that lead leg is yeah. incredible. Yeah, it's a lot of leg to lift up and flick out. I'm going to find a can of Monster Energy drink after the show and see if we can kick it off your head, Paul. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's do that. I bet he can. I I try, I trust him. Uh -huh. The interesting thing was I actually visited Volkov this camp in Moscow and the cage that they've got in that gym is about 20 times smaller than what we see in front of us. <laughs> it's like he throws a jab and it's hitting the other Ooh. side of the fence. Oh. Another beautiful body kick from Volkov. No chamber, just, excuse me, no switch. Does chamber. Oh, what was that, the mouthpiece? Something went flying out of the octagon. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it was tape. Is it tape? It tape. It would have been much more dramatic if it was the mouthpiece. <laughs> it would jump. You mean gum shield? <laughs> hey. I don't know what you mean. Greg Hardy's trying to get fired up here, but Volkov's just so accurate, so consistent with his uh, with his striking. He's picking him apart from the outside. And what this does, I mean, 20 seconds left, uh, you've got to feel like Volkov's running away with this decision. Oh, oh, lovely this, stutter step there from Volkov to yeah. land that jab. But what this does for Hardy is it shows him where the level is at heavyweight in the top ten. This is this is great for him to go back to the gym and go, OK, I, I know the level I need to raise my game to now to compete with these guys. Yeah, this is definitely not a, a, you know, a lost cause there for Greg. No, Hardy. No, this, this is something he can hang his head up and be like, OK, I just went three rounds. Yeah, 
Очень хорошо убить, пошел. Почему убить? Кошки вот да? Ну кто UFC Fight Night is brought to you by P3, the official protein snack of UFC. And the background there is St. Basil's Cathedral, recognizes the symbol of the country, a real masterpiece consecrated in the 16th century. Time now to hear what the judges thought of this one. Here's Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three score it 30 27. Your winner by unanimous decision from Moscow, Russia, Alexander Dragon.